page 120 writing report writing report can be of various types the most common types of reports that you will come across are reports interpreting data business reports and scientific or technical reports reports interpreting data these reports include inferences from statistics and other data they are used to present findings and inferences based on numerical or factual information business reports these reports analyze business case studies or scenarios and apply a range of theories and recommendations for example how to increase the productivity of employees in the in an organization scientific or technical reports these reports are used to present findings from research investigations and as a design solution at the academic level they are used to assess the ability of students to apply practical solutions to real life problems related to science and engineering reports are highly structured documents whether technical or business report it is a structure that helps readers understand the report if effortlessly and act on their conclusions and recommendations hence before you learn to write a report you must have a clear understanding of its various sections and their functional value within the document Here is a table that shows the different sections of a report and what they include. The sections are listed in the sequence in which they appear in a report. This information will be immensely useful when you work on reports as part of the coursework in your domain subjects. So here you have various sections of the reports and what each section includes and this is the order in which all these parts appear in a report let's look at them first we have the title page the title page includes the title of the report author's name id number if necessary course name and number department and university or college and date of submission sorry second abstract or summary this includes a brief overview of the report with all the key features what was done how it was done and the main outcomes of the work next we have acknowledgments It is an expression of gratitude towards the people who have helped in carrying out the study and writing of the report. Next table of contents. Here we have sections and subsections of the report along with their page numbers. Then we have introduction. Here we have a background to the topic. a statement regarding the purpose of the report the te technical background necessary to understand the report and a brief outline of its structure then we have the methods which includes a list of equipment and material used procedures followed sources of the material used necessary preparations made and problems encountered particularly if they resulted in changes in the procedure then we have discussion of results 
It is a summary of the results of the investigation or experiment or study along with supporting diagrams, graphs and tables, whatever is used. Then we have conclusion. This is a statement specifying whether the purpose of the study has been met, the key findings and the major outcomes of the research. Then we have references. Here we have a list of all the sources, books, journals, websites, etc. used in the suggested format of referencing. Then we have appendices or an extra. Here we can see additional tables, graphs, questionnaires, etc. which are not central to the report but play a useful role. Task 12. These extracts are from a report on BT Brinjal. Decide which section of the report each extract has been taken from. Please read it carefully and write the answers and then we will discuss. I will give you the answers. Okay, so pause, read and then check. Number one, introduction. Number two, abstract. Number three, introduction. Number four, acknowledgement. Five, conclusion. Six, reference, references. Seven, title page. And eight, discussion of results. Page 122, task 13. Read and decide if these sentences are suitable or unsuitable based on their construction for inclusion in a report. Give reasons for your choice. One has been done for you. Number one, Chandigarh was surprisingly blessed with beautiful thunder showers and endless streaks of lightning in the evening yesterday. This is not suitable because it uses emotive language. Chandigarh experienced sudden thunder showers, incessant streaks of lightning and 8 mm of rain over a period of 2 hours last evening. This is suitable because it is factual and precise. Number 2. The sky cleared up by 9 p.m. but the moon wasn't visible until 9.30. This is not suitable because we have used a contraction here. Wasn't. For all formal writing, we are not allowed to use contractions. We use a full form. So you cannot say wasn't. You have to say was not. The next one is suitable. The sky cleared up by 9 p.m. but the moon was not visible until 9.30. Number three, laser light amplification by stimulated emission radiation treatment was found to be very effective in treating the condition. This is suitable because it is clear. The second one under three, Laser treatment was found to be very effective in treating the condition. This is not suitable because the full form of laser is not given there. The first one is very clear for the reader. Number four. I have statistically analyzed the responses given by the students with reference to their music preferences. This is unsuitable because this is in the active voice. The responses of the students regarding their music preferences were statistically analyzed. This is suitable because it is in the passive voice. Number five. 
This report studies the cause-effect relationship that exists between environmental factors and crop yield. This is the first one. It is not suitable because the purpose is not clear. The next one is suitable and that's because the purpose is clear. I will read out the second one which is suitable. Through this report, it was our intention to study the relationship that exists between environmental factors and crop yield and how these factors have an adverse or supportive effect on the yield that we get from crops. Okay, so we see once again, I state that the purpose is clear in this statement. Let's move to page 123. Types of reports. Reports can be of many types. The following are some examples of reports that you might come across in your academic or professional careers. Progress reports. These reports give information regarding the progress made on a particular project or an assignment over a period of time. Justification reports. These are reports that justify specific recommendations or proposals. For example, why should higher budgets be allotted for finding alternative energy sources? Next, compliance reports. These reports tell us whether a business or product or strategy or proposal adheres to the established guidelines or procedures. Annual reports. These reports tell us how the activities conducted by an organization throughout tell us, sorry, annual reports are reports that tell us about the activities conducted by an organization throughout the year. Then we have feasibility reports. A feasibility report states a need or a proposed idea and recommends a course of action based on that. For example, cost benefits of investing in new IT systems for a particular organization, feasibility of using alternative fuels etc. Business plans. A business plan is a proposal to start a new business or a venture. It would talk about investments, methods of production, the market in which the product will be sold, funding, the returns expected, etc. Please put a comma after expected because there is etc. after that. Next, we have technical specifications. These are documents that define a set of requirements that a product or assembly must meet or exceed. Specifications are used when a contract for a technical product or service is issued. Then we have book reports. Book reports present a gist of the content and the major features of a book. These generally include plot summaries, analysis of major characters, and analysis of major features and themes. Study the two sample reports given below. One is a business report and the other is a short technical report. Please look at the two reports. Page 125. Here are some pointers on the kind of language to be used while writing reports. Adopt a simple and concise style focusing on facts. Avoid emotive language, which means don't show your emotions in the language that you use in a report. Adopt a simple and concise style focusing on facts. It should be easy for people to understand.
Your writing must be crisp. Do not frame sentences with multiple clauses. As a report is a formal document, avoid using contracted forms of verbs. Check and correct spelling, grammar and punctuation before finalizing the report. The first time you use an abbreviation or an acronym, spell it out completely. Don't expect the reader to know the full form of an acronym or, a, or an abbreviation. Okay, So you get the full form the first time you're mentioning that acronym or abbreviation and then afterwards you can just use the, the acronym or abbreviation. Next, avoid using the pronoun I as a report should be objective in tone. And the last one mentioned here on page 126 is use active voice wherever possible. Your report should be a judicious mix of sentences in active and passive voice. Voices. Task 14. Select a simple topic from your domain area and write a report with the guidance of your teacher. Which is, not, which is not possible now because your teacher is not with you. Anyway, there are some useful phrases for report writing. The purpose of this report is, this is used for stating the aim. On the whole, this expression is used for making a generalization. There's an urgent need to. This expression can be used for making a recommendation. The data suggests that this can be used for making inferences. That's the end of Unit 5. After this, you have Appendix 1, which has prepositions. And then Appendix 2, which has technical vocabulary. You can have a look at them. And then you have acknowledgements. That's the end of the textbook. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been useful to you. God bless you.